Thank you very much. What I want to talk about is, uh, my title of my talk tonight is Iran Hysteria. And the point I want to make is that it's feeling very much like 2002 all over again, except this time it's Iran instead of Iraq. And I am very nervous about the buildup uh, to a military attack on Iran. For example, on November 14th, a couple of weeks ago, the Wall Street Journal published an editorial. It was called, quote, if Iran gets the bomb, close quote. And the editorial concluded, quote, the question for the world, and especially for the Obama administration, is whether those dire consequences are worse than the risks of a preemptive strike. We think we know what the Israelis will decide, especially if they conclude that President Obama stays on his current course. Opponents of a preemptive strike say it would do no more than delay Iran's programs for a few years. But something similar was said after Israel's strike on Iraq's Osirak reaction, reactor in 1981, without which the United States could never have stood up to Saddam after his invasion of Kuwait. In life as in politics, nothing is forever. But a strike that sets Iran's nuclear program back by several years at least offers the opportunity for Iran's democratic forces to topple the regime without risking a wider conflagration. Footnote, I don't know what the connection is between an American attack on Iran, the opposition having it without risking further. I don't get that one at all. No U.S. Pre to continue with the editorial, no U.S. president could undertake a strike on Iran except as a last resort. And Mr. Obama can fairly say that he has given every resort short of war an honest try. At the same time, no U.S. president should leave his successor with the catastrophe that would be a nuclear Iran. A nuclear Iran on Mr. Obama's watch would be fatal to more than his legacy, close quote. The obviously obvious implication of this editorial is that Obama's legacy will begin on January 21st, 2013, after he loses the November presidential election. So the window that Obama has is only between now and January 21, 19, uh, 2013. Uh, if you go back to the Republican candidate's foreign policy debate, which was held on November 22nd, uh, Newt Gingrich called for the United States to bring about regime change in Iran in the next year, again, another Obama deadline, uh, and also to go about sabotaging Iran's refining capabilities. Further, a man named Jamshid Chokri, whom I have not heard of before, had an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal, and Chokri by the way, is identified as a professor of Iranian studies at Indiana University. And this professor of Iranian studies proposes an air campaign against Iran. So I went to the Indy University website to find out who this Jamshid Chokri was. He is identified on the website as, and listen to this, Professor Central Eurasian Studies, Professor History, Professor Ancient Studies, Professor Indian Studies, Professor Medieval Studies, Professor Middle Eastern Studies, Professor Islamic Studies. Is this guy amazing or what? <laughs> Adjunct Professor of Religious Studies. But you'll be happy to know in this room that nobody identifies him on the website as a professor of Iranian studies. But the Wall Street Journal does. So in any case. Um, he's very impressive, but he's not a professor of Iranian studies. And he says in this op-ed, listen to this, quote, the real goal of airstrikes should not only be to target Iran's nuclear facilities, but to cripple the Ayatollah's ability to protect themselves from popular overthrows. Western airstrikes should hit other military production facilities. Thanks. And the bases of the IRGC and the Basij, a foreign takedown of those enforcers would give Iran's population the opportunity to rise again. The IRGC's claim that it can retaliate significantly 
are largely blustered. The Iranian Navy's fast boats and midget submarines in the Persian Gulf <clears throat> could be eliminated through pinpoint strikes, as could our Army artillery batteries along the Strait of Hormuz. Through such decisive action, the U.S. and its allies could help Iranians bring the popular uprising of 2009 to a fitting conclusion, close quote. You know, just a few bombing runs, right? You know, the old surgical strike routine? Uh, Choksi would not just take out Iran's nuclear enrichment program, but other production facilities and Revolutionary Guard and Basij bases that are scattered all over the country and most especially throughout Tehran itself. As well, he would also take out a variety of other military installations. Uh, Choksi, by the way, was very kind to spare the Iranian Air Force, which has 30 or so bases in Iran from which they could launch bombing campaigns against Saudi Arabian oil facilities after such an American strike. Something tells me that the Iranian people who are bound to suffer significant casualties in this massive and geographically dispersed bombing campaign would not see this as the liberation. He proposes instead, it would seem to me, they would rally around the regime in a burst of Iranian nationalism uh, which we all understand to be the case, which is to say you scratch an Iranian and what do you get? A nationalist. So the passion and the stridency of these calls from the U.S. and from the Israeli right wing and from the so-called Zionist lobby of evangelical Christians um, has been markedly escalated with the release of the new International Atomic Energy Report on Iran as of November 8, 2011. The summary of this report concluded, and I wish to read the summary to you, quote, while the agency continues to verify the non-diversion of declared nuclear material at the nuclear facilities, declared by Iran under its safeguards agreement, as Iran is not providing the necessary cooperation, including by not implementing its additional protocols, the agency is unable to provide credible assurance about the absence of undeclared nuclear material and activities in Iran, and therefore to conclude that all nuclear material in Iran is intended for peaceful activities. Furthermore, we're still quoting, the agency has serious concerns regarding possible military dimensions to Iran's nuclear program. After assessing carefully and critically the extensive information indicates that Iran has carried out activities relevant to the development of a nuclear explosive device. The information also indicates that prior to the end of 2003, these activities took place under, under a structured program and that some activities may still be going on. Sounds menacing, right? But a close reading of the report makes clear that the most menacing activity occurred before 2003 when the U.S. National Intelligence Estimate concluded that Iran indeed had ended its nuclear we uh, weapons development program. If you want to see a much more detailed critique of the International Atomic Energy Agency's report, go to the New Yorker blogs and see a blog by Seymour Hersh, H-E-R-S-H, because as you all know, if those of you know Cy, he's a guy from High Park who's become this uh, very prominent journalist in America. Uh, Cy Hirsch is not a patsy. Cy Hirsch is a very tough guy on the United States uh, and on Iran. Ehud Barak, Israel's defense minister, was on Charlie Rose's show on November 15, 2011. And Barak said that all the evidence pointed to Iran's developing a military nuclear capability. Charlie Rose then asked Barack if, if he were an Iranian leader, would he want to develop nuclear weapons? And Barack, of course, said, quote, probably, probably, close quote. Uh, he then pointed out, Barack then pointed out that Iran has many neighbors with nuclear weapons, which explains why Iran would want the deterrence of nukes. What Barack did not mention, however, was the additional fact that the United States occupies the countries to Iran's immediate west and to Iran's immediate east as well and has ships 
south of Iran in the Persian Gulf and nuclear weapons in the neighborhood. Barak, however, denied any intention of allowing Iran to fulfill their wish, as he said, just as it would have been suicidally claimed for the world to tolerate Syria or Gaddafi's developing nuclear weapons. If it is so easy to understand Iran's alleged desire to acquire nukes as a deterrent against the threats which it confronts, it should not be too difficult to understand a way to talk to Iran to explore the ways in which it might be reassured that developing nuclear weapons would not be in its own best interest. The one guarantee that such, such talks would fail would be to persist in the threats and the hysteria now coming from Prime Minister Netanyahu and Defense Minister Barack and certain presidential hopefuls in the United States. What the United States does not need anytime soon is another war against another Islamic country. Negotiations, threat-free, between equals, needs to be tried and soon. The one thing that the United States has not yet tried. Thank you very much.